so we've got some people, new people, folks on the here. So maybe uh, let's do some intros. Um, yeah. Why don't you kick us off, David? Yeah, sure. Sounds good. Uh, yeah, my name's David. Um, I'm uh, um, on the LTT team, which is the language and tools team for uh, CloudFormation. Um, and yeah, really excited to give a demo of what we've been working on lately. And um, yeah, so I'll pass off to Parjat. Thank you, David. Hello, everyone. My name is Parijat. I am the Senior Product Manager for AWS CloudFormation. Really excited to be here on the show again. Uh, Happy New Year, guys. Thank you for having us. Excited to talk about how we are working on improving our developer experience, uh, as well as like things that we are working uh, around CloudFormation language. Very exciting. I didn't, I, I'm been looking forward to the demo. I know the audience is ready for it. But first, I have a question for the both of you. I got on your GitHub, and I saw in on the Linter project, there was a the mascot is a lint roller. <laughs> Whose idea was this? Because to me, that that was the light bulb moment when I saw the lint roller. I was like, I now understand what this thing does. Oh, uh, I, I would say it is it is definitely um it was before my time. So I really don't know the answer. It's probably one of those urban myths that's around. So I'll have to find a document. Uh that will tell us how how the logo came about. But thank you for that. No, thank you for that gesture. Hey, it's it, it, it's fun. They're they're useful tools in in my life because I got a dog, and I'm sure it's useful for customers. Uh, oh yeah, cloud formation. So excited to see what y'all got for us. Uh, thank you, Trevor. Um, I think before we get into the demo, I think that we've got people who are brand new to AWS. So the folks who maybe aren't familiar with AWS, can you just give them a brief overview of what cloud formation is? Of course, Julian. Uh, so. AWS CloudFormation is one of the most classical IAC tool that AWS provides. So when I say IAC, what we mean by that is infrastructure as code. So prior to like the dawn of uh, infrastructure as code, uh, what used to happen is customer would deploy an entire architecture. Let's say an example of an application that has some VPC, some EC2 server, some S3, and then maybe perhaps some configuration policy. People had to do that. They had to do it manually or build some sort of like a custom orchestration logic uh, to do enable all of that. So what CloudFormation does is it provides a customer the very simplest way uh, of uh, building that sort of an architecture in a declarative format uh, using our JSON and YAML templates. So today you can define your uh, infrastructure not only within our AWS services, uh, but also some non-AWS partners such as MongoDB, Mulearic, uh, Datadoc, who are public registry. Uh, so that's what uh, CloudFormation is. It is a simple uh, IAC tool that allows you to define your infrastructure on cloud uh, in the way you want in a declarative format using our JSON and YAML uh, language. And what the linter tool does, and I guess this is what where people might be thinking, what is the linter tool, right? So, so to, again, we what we really wanted to do was uh, as a customer, as our developers, like building their cloud formation templates, uh, we wanted to speed up the entire dev test cycle, right? We wanted to ensure that when you're uploading your tech templates to our technology, you do not face so many errors, like whether it could be your template size, very cloud formation based rules, right? So, what the linter tool does. It helps customer like validate their template against these like default cloud formation based rules. Uh, these rules can be, hey, what is my template size? Whether my intrinsic functions such as like the if statement, does it make sense? It's syntactically and the structure wise. Um, so the linter tool helps you validate your template even before deploying and helps you reduce those errors. And at the same time, it provides you the ability to define custom rules, right? So you can have, let's say, an organization specific rule saying that, hey, if I somebody tries to um, maybe perhaps provision an EC2 that is fairly expensive in a different configuration, we should throw them an error message, right? Educating them, hey, maybe this is an uh, expensive resource. So, so the Linter tool helps you to do that. We are not launching the Linter tool. This has been in the market for almost about four years. I think it came in 2018. Uh, this year, uh, this week, what we have launched is we have support. We are supporting the CFN linter tool uh, in your SAM CLI. So today, when you're trying to validate your SAM templates, uh, you have an optional parameter uh, where you can now use the linter tool not only the default cloud uh, cloud formation based rules, but also like the uh, the custom rules. So I'm excited to, for David to show all of that demo that we have done. So the demo will speak for itself. But yeah, that's what the the entire launch is about. So really uh, excited to talk about that. Yes. So we're not launching exciting. the linter tool. But no, it's no, about but, the, but I, I haven't used it before, but I'm going to have to look at this thing, right? Because usually when I test my, I test my cloud formation script, uh, templates by launching them and then getting a bunch of red errors yes. and having to figure yes. out <laughs> what the heck I did wrong. So you're telling me that I can now do this before I put it in the console and start trying to look through the error log. So uh, I, I'm, uh, this is, this is going to be very useful for me. Yep, I'm me excited too. to see. <laughs> oh, no, thank you for those compliments, Trevor. Um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of what we are, we're excited to talk about today, but of course, we'll definitely segue to the language discussions down the line post demo. 
Yeah, let's, I think we should see it. All right, yeah. Um, so just for a little bit more of context, um, yeah, about AWS SAM um, or SAM serverless application models. Um, it's what a lot of customers use to model their service applications. And so the template that they use is actually very closely um, following the cloud formation template. Um, so I can pull up a basic template here just to take a look at. Um, and we see, yeah, like I said, it follows the cloud formation template very closely. Um, it's basically you allow a transform, serverless transform. And so that what that provides for customers is you can see these extra global section and some um, serverless specific uh, resources. And so uh, what customers use to create and deploy and test a lot of these templates is the SAM CLI. Uh, which is a very powerful tool for doing those things. And um, what we wanted to improve was their current uh, validation process. Um, so right now, it essentially checks that you have um, what is what is this, uh, what is a um, basic JSON or a YAML configuration that you have uh, correctly done. Um, so it's missing some more um, specific or deeper validations uh, intrinsic to CloudFormation and for um, SAM. And so I can take us through a couple examples where we can go through what um, is currently being outputted by the validation process and what with the new uh, linter optional parameter um, can provide for customers. Um, so we can take a look at this uh, template. And so one of the most perhaps most egregious examples is if we just take out this transfer entirely, which would prevent us access um, to this global section and to these, um, this serverless function as well, which is a SAM resource. And so if we run the validation command, uh, we would expect some sort of error to pop up to let us know that we're missing this transform. Um, but what currently happens right now is um, it will actually report a false positive. It'll tell us that it's a valid SAM template. Um, and what we want to provide customers is the option to run it with this more specific uh, linter option, which uh, aims to provide more specific errors. So we can try it again with this optional parameter here. And we can see that it outputs what we expect from CFN lint, which is a documented error code, which we can also, which you can view on the GitHub. Um, we have a very specific error message here. And we also see that it provides the customer with a uh, path to where the error occurs. And so you see without the uh, serverless function, we're missing what we expect to have in the template. And so this is a very basic example. You know, uh, most customers writing their templates would like to not forget to include this transform. Um, but what if we also have a intrinsic function in here? So we can see that a very small um, short form exclamation point is missing here. And so that's a very small mistake that you could possibly miss, especially if you have a particularly long template. Um, it would be quite a process to scroll through and try to find this um, error specifically. And so if we try this again, we can see that it will pick up that uh, we have these embedded parameters that are outside of this function sub. And so we're able to provide the customer with, uh, again, with the path to where the error is and hopefully be able to resolve that much more faster. Um, so the last example that we'd like to go through is what Parjad mentioned with the custom rules. Um, so yeah, if you have like an organi organizational specific rule that you want to apply to your templates, um, you can specify a custom rule uh, very easily. Um, so all you need to do is create a custom rules file. And so what you first start with is the resource type itself, its attribute, and then a very simple uh, operator here to say that we don't want our instance type to be, for example, a 2T micro. And this would throw an error in this case. And we want the error message to display that it should not be of this type. And so if we look at a, a template where we just you know throw in an EC2 instance here, and we see that the instance type is indeed 2T micro, then when we apply the uh, linter while specifying this other template, we can see that this error code is now outputted as well. Um, so it outputs what we expect. We see the instance type, instance type cannot be of 2T micro, and it will still pick up the other errors that we see from before regarding the uh, function sub. And so with this, we're hoping to provide customers uh, more flexibility um, hopefully, uh, as Trevor mentioned, you can find these errors uh, before you deploy it and, you know, um, be able to pick up on these much, much faster and be able to fix them much faster as well. Well, I can already see just from watching this how much faster and more productive developers are going to be. Yeah, that's what we're hoping. 
Yeah. I just want to say that if you guys really like using our tool, we have made some Twitter posts. Do retweet and like our tweets. Uh, let me uh do a short plug of uh the Twitter handle of uh, Cloud Formation as well as the tweet on this launch. I love it. Any advice, tips for people who before they get started with it? Um. So this feature right now is just built into the SAM CLI tool automatically. So there's nothing, no more onboarding that anybody needs to do. Um, I would suggest taking a look at the GitHub page. We have a very detailed section um, showing all the different types of rules we have, um, how to configure more uh, custom rules, and um, yeah, just about any other information that you might want to view. I, I have one one question on this for you all, just, just out of curiosity. Is this tool used just for like development testing or could you build this into like those custom rules into like a, a pipeline to check your SAM template before it gets deployed? Yeah, so from uh, a lot of SAM CLI customers will have a CI CD processes and we're hoping that they can build that into their processes as well. Very cool, very cool. Nice. Good question. Well, yeah, um, David Parijit, thank you so much for telling us all about uh, the CloudFormation Linter tool. This is really exciting. I'm sure a lot of people are going to start using it. Yeah, no no, thank you, Thanks Julian. Thank you for the opportunity, as always.